Hey guys, it's Goldie here, coming out with another video. Now, I was supposed to upload, well, not upload, but I was supposed to make this video, like, probably, like, two months ago. Um, and I was having some te 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 technical difficulties with um, Vert Manager, which I just didn't bother to fix in the end. But I also, like, lost um, my USB that I needed to make this possible. So yeah, two things. That's that, and then I had issues with Vert Manager with Netokin. I have no idea why, but yeah, I was having some issues and I couldn't get it to work. Uh, let me just double check to see if my OBS settings here is correct because I actually did not even check those. Um, I have no idea what profile I'm recording. Oh, I'm recording. Okay, I'm recording the correct profile. This is the correct one. Yes. Anyways, so we're gonna do distribution reviews. So they're going to do Ubuntu 24. The reason why I'm doing 24 is because this is the newest one, I believe. And I haven't, I've never actually used the newest one. You might be able to tell as well, like I have Linux Mint 22, which is also the latest one, I believe as well. Um, and Fedora 40 is also the latest. So you can see I got like new distributions here. Reason being is because I want to make videos on them. The last time I used like one of these distributions was I used Fedora and that was in Fedora 38. So I want to like use these just to see like what where they're at, you know, like what stage they are at. And at the end of these videos, I want to be able to know like what stage Linux is at in terms of like giving it to like a beginner, giving it to someone who's new to Linux. But anyways, enough yapping, let's get right into this. So I use Ventoy. Um, for this and by the way this is in the virtual machine so do expect bugs um this is gonna be like this is gonna be one of like the very bad things about the way i'm doing these tutorials is that i'm using a virtual machine and if you don't know about using virtual machines with linux is that not in particular with linux but just with any operating system really is that there will be bugs there will be issues so especially new software as well so especially new like uh, um versions of linux distributions like this one i'm getting right now there's gonna be bugs and there's gonna be problems with virtual machines like that right there um so like if if something does if a bug does occur i always just assume that it's because i'm using a virtual machine is why that bug's happening and it isn't an actual bug you know so we are in Ubuntu 24 and this is a welcome thing that's loading up right here but one thing which uh, you Windows users might not be aware of with Linux is that on Linux as you can see I booted into the ISO file on, on Windows when you boot into the ISO file just had to let that play there but when you boot into the ISO, ISO, ISO file for Windows um, it takes you right into the installer and pretty much Oh, like the only the only thing you can do is just install the operating system. But on Linux, when we boot into the ISO file, this is what we call a live ISO file. So essentially, this is a live operating system running right here. So this is all like this 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 is literally Ubuntu running right here. Like I did not even have to install it. Like it's not even installed. Like I can show you. Like Ubuntu is not you know it's not installed. I still have my other um, other hard drives here. Um, could they usually show up here at the corner, but they haven't showed up yet, but I don't know why they haven't showed up. But anyways, you get my point, right? So these are live ISO, so this is a whole operating system. I got Firefox here, I got, you know, Thunderbird Mail, I got a, a File Explorer, I got all of this, all these applications are here and I can use them. This is the beauty of Linux, this is the beauty of live ISO files. So essentially this is what I'm going to be using. I'm not going to be installing Ubuntu actually. I'm going to be running the live distribution. So also that is another thing you got to also factor in is that I'm running the live distribution. So it's going to be problems. So let's just go through the setup a little bit. I'm not going to install it. I just want to go through the, the installation guide and then I'm going to press cancel the end. But we've got accessibility. So it's very, very nice where you have accessibility like literally like right here, like on the next click accessibility. You know, you can click on this here in Type in and what do you click in? Let's see what's on the point. Click in mouse keys. You got zoom in, let's up zoom. Like it, it's nice that we have all of this like just there already. Like this is this is a very you know um very nice file I think. I contrast that works, you know. Cool. So just press next and then we got our keyboard layout. So I um obviously I'm in the UK so I'm gonna do English UK and press next. 
Um, and then we got my Wi-Fi, so I'm gonna use a wide connection, it should work. And then we got updates, so let's gonna do some updates. I'm gonna skip this for now, and I'm not gonna go um, further than this section here. However, I think I can do. Um, I mean, I press try Ubuntu. So usually it gives you two options. You can install Ubuntu, so you can use it ISO file to actually install the operating system onto your actual computer. And then we got try Ubuntu, which when you click on try Ubuntu, it lets you close the installer. And now you're presented with the Ubuntu 24 operating system. So the Ubuntu 24 um, it's based on Debian. Uh, I'm sure you guys already know like the basics of what Ubuntu is, and you guys, and you guys just want to see me review this. Um, so yeah. So the first thing we are gonna do is change our our resolution. So I'm gonna stick to like the same task for every operating system. So if I do Fedora, if I do uh, Linux Mint, I'm gonna stick to the same steps of things I've done in Ubuntu. So um, also again, sorry for the yapping, but in this, in, just in this video, just in this video, I'm gonna like just talk a bit more because I wanna explain to you how I'm gonna actually do these videos. But anyways, let's, um, uh, let's change our resolution. So we have to go find the settings. Sorry, settings right here. Click convenient. Um, is my wide network configuration right here. So let's go over to. As you can see, the cursor is cursor is already glitched. As you can see, um, it's giving me like weird. Like it's supposed to literally be the pointer, but you see how? Okay, now it's fine, but it wasn't fine before. Which is weird. So as you can see, like the, the resolution is not right. Um, the quality might look very bad on YouTube, and that's because it actually does look this bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that. So let's go to displays and change this, and let's click um, 1920 by 1080 because that is actually my resolution. And keep it to 60 hertz. I press X, press apply. Keep changes. So now we're in 1920 by 1080. So now it's gonna look a lot better for you guys. Um, also looks a lot better for me. So anyways, yeah, so this is Ubuntu and it's running the GNOME desktop environment. Um, you know, on Linux there's multiple different desktop environments. So desktop environments are basically just like, essentially it's just the GUI to your operating system. Um, and that's pretty much what it is. This is the desktop environment. Oh, this is the desktop environment. Everything you see here is the desktop environment. That's essentially what it is. I can go a lot more deeper into what this environment is and what window manager is, but I'm not gonna do that in this video. So, the next thing we're going to do, so we, we set, to set up the resolution. We're going to go to Firefox now, open up the web browser. So like I said, um, on Linux is live disk. And by the way, when, you, when you're when you installing it, so when you click on install Ubuntu and when it's actually installing the operating system, you are actually able to use the operating system while you are installing the operating system. I know, right? It's crazy. On the Windows, all you could do is install the operating system. On here, you can install the operating system while watching YouTube on Firefox. That is how insane this is. I actually did that once when I was installing Fedora. I was just watching YouTube like, on the side, like on the same system. It's pretty cool. So, obviously, you can click on YouTube here and just will load up YouTube and everything like this and reject. So, and like, obviously, I got my history out because I'm not logged into anything. So, yeah, that's, there we go. That's Firefox. Um, Cool. And we got Thunderbird Mail, which is, I believe, the mail mail client of choice. Um, I I don't really use a mail client. I do have a mail client. I do have Thunderbird on my um, Arch install. However, I barely use it really. Um, but anyways, so we got files. So this is a GNOME file explorer. So we can go over to like downloads, for example, and we've got Thunderbird temp, which is just don't know why I dumped that there, but yep. Um, create a folder here. And we can probably create like a file here. So let's do, oh, interesting. We can create a file. I think that's because of uh, my setup that I have currently with um, Ventoy. I can't create a file. That's also an issue because of my setup not because of Ubuntu, otherwise there would be a create file here because I am familiar with GNOME. Um, so yeah, that pretty much is the file explorer. Pretty it's simple. Um, one thing I do like GNOME, GNOME for is how simple things look. Just It's just like, it's just like straightforward. Yeah, like, I, I really do like the file explorer, I really do. Um, I only dislike it when like, like I, I actually, 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There, there's a few things I hate about the Fire Explorer, but right now the Fire Explorer that I'm seeing right here is pretty good. Okay, so let's actually start with some of the tasks. We already be began with some of the tasks. Um, like we did um, change the resolution, opening Firefox, opening web browser, searching YouTube. We've done that. So yeah. Oh yeah. By the way, um, I'm also gonna install NeoFetch. This to show you my specs I have on this virtual machine. So I'm gonna open up a terminal actually. So we're on terminal and we are gonna quickly open that up and we're gonna ABT update to update our database packages. So ABT is the package manager for Ubuntu, if you already know. So we're gonna do um, sudo apt install and we're gonna install new fetch. I'm gonna create screen. Oh, and let me fetch. So here's my um, specs right here. So I have eight gigabytes of RAM allocated to this VM. I do have my CPU, like um, basically, uh, I have the CPU name and everything. This is my actual CPU I have. However, I believe I have only eight cores allocated to this virtual machine. Um, and yeah, that's the rest of the stuff. We're running GNOME 46, 24. Um, yeah, we have uh, 1,844 packages, which is quite a lot for a system that has, you know, that I've basically like just loaded. However, that is a Ubuntu for you. Um, but to, if there is a distribution that has the most packages, it's probably a Ubuntu. I don't know if there are any that have any more than that. But yeah, Ubuntu isn't, you know, isn't well known for its lightweight, you know, like it's not. It's kind of, it's not its, its philosophy that the whole point of Ubuntu is for it to be simple and easy to use for basically the average Andy, but yeah, packages are not really a concern when you're in something like Ubuntu. So yeah, let me just close this. So we're going to install MPV. So let's do that. So let's do sudo apt install MPV. So we should be able to use MPV to open up a YouTube video. It should open up MPV. I should play the video. Let's see. All right, hey guys, um, Goldie here. And today I'm gonna to show you how to downgrade dependencies in Arch Linux. So I have a dependency um, called Electron. I have an application called Vextop, which is basically like my Discord collab. So you can see there it's playing in MPV. This seems to work. Um, these are all so quite flawlessly. If I just the reason why this is happening is actually. So, anyways, I'm gonna close that. Okay, now we are off to customization. What customization can we do? But with GNOME, there is customization. If I go over to settings right here, um, so we're gonna uh, customize our system. We're gonna change the color of. We're gonna change maybe the accent color or maybe change it to dark mode and then we're gonna apply a wallpaper. So let's see how easy that is to do in something like GNOME. So let's try and find wallpapers um, or you know um, to try and find theme in. I can change this to dark mode. So over and we're gonna go over to appearance. And we can click on dark, which should change this to dark mode. So also change the wallpaper to dark mode as well. This is an interactive wallpaper, which is really nice. Really nice touch in about the 24. Also got some wallpapers here to choose from. So here's we got some um don't know what that is, but we got seems like you know seems seems like an ocean and clouds reflecting off it. No idea what that is. I could have got like a big rank. Looks like we got um, a mountain here, and then I think this is one of the wallpapers. A bunch of wallpapers. Um, a light bulb here. Amazing. Fantastic. And then we got the interactive one. Cool. 
So we're going to um, see how easy it is to actually add a wallpaper, like a custom one. So we're going to go over to our web browser, see what we can get here. So um, we got a Saka here with the Windows XP wallpaper. So I'm going to actually install that. So let's just do this first. See if we can get the actual like, source. Okay. It seems to be, let's just save image as, and I'm going to save it in our downloads um, folder here. So it's downloading that now completed now let's go back to our settings and try to apply that picture so we just add picture it's my downloads osaka bliss wallpaper <laughs> open and let's press on osaka and there we go we have osaka on our desktop cool okay so let's actually try and also um see if you can move this um panel here so i want to move this panel to the bottom let's say so I'm going to try and see if I can customize that. Let's try and see if I can go to the settings and see if you can change that. Um, anything like panel, um, displays, interesting, appearance, um, Ubuntu desktop. Okay. The dark. All right. Panel mode. So dark extends the scream edge let's see oh okay so we can make it into a little um dark like this like i think this is the original how it originally looks but we had panel mode on so it's made the whole thing like a panel we also got auto hide so it's gonna auto hide now unless i um i think you have to actually open the application yeah there we go so auto hides cool let me just turn that off. Okay. And then we got um, icon size. So we can change the icon size. So I'm going to get a bit smaller. 40. And then we got show one different desktop. So I only have one desktop at the moment. And let's, oh yeah, let's position it to the bottom. There we go. So we have the panel now positioned to the bottom. And let's do config Docker behavior. Let's see what this has. Include the unmounted volumes. Let's remove that. Let's remove network volumes. Um, we can like keep the trash. We could just press on this. And there we go. We also got size, large and tiny. We can make the icons bigger, it seems. Pretty standard. And there we go. So also seems to kind of move to this, I guess. Okay, so we installed an application on the command line. Let's try and install it from the App Store. So yes, App Store does exist. We have App Center here. And I'm gonna try and install something. We're gonna try and install Super Tux Cart. Let's see if we can play this. Keep in mind, I am playing on keyboard, so I don't know my key binds for drifting. So we're able to play Tux Cart, relatively easy. So there we got HTOP. We're running just at 2.7 gigabytes. However, I do have, I mean, I did have Firefox open, but I think I have everything closed now. So yeah, they're using 2.7.4 gigabytes of memory right here. So I think that kind of wraps up the video. I don't know anything else I should do. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything else that I should kind of review in the in description. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and peace out.